If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on everyone? My name is Obi and welcome back to Courtside Financial. Today we're going to be talking about Neil's relentless infrastructure pursuits that resemble Amazon's not too long ago. The cool thing about business is that there's many uh, case studies that can be used to kind of uh, look forward into the future. And so I wanted to kind of tackle angles that many aren't speaking about today. But before we get into the video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and make sure you leave a comment down below if you have any insight or um, just want to leave your opinion on the video. Liking and subscribing really does go a long way in helping out the channel, so thank you. In 2013, Mad Money host Jim Cramer was given credit for coming up with the term FANG. Originally, it included four high growth tech stocks that he recommended, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, and Google. All American technological powerhouses which have served those who had invested at the time very well. There's been an extra A which has been added which is Apple which needs no introduction and the N for Netflix is also being replaced with Microsoft which is a stock that Wall Street loves. Anyways for the purposes of this video let's just keep it as Fang because that could turn into a completely separate discussion which we're not looking to get into today. Amazon and original Fang stock had not reached its exuberant highs without question of whether the company's making the right decisions or not. To dive into the topic that I wanna talk about today, infrastructure, we don't have to look too far back. So to kick things off, let's rewind and kind of set the stage here. 2017, many Amazon shareholders were very critical of the company because it had reached an all-time high of 7.2 billion US dollars in shipping losses in 2016. The e-commerce giant started its own self-fulfilled delivery service in 2014, fulfilled by Amazon, and that's when we started seeing these blue Amazon trucks driving around, even stopping by our doorsteps to drop off packages. In the early 21st century, Amazon relied on third-party companies such as FedEx and UPS to deliver our packages. Today, fulfilled by Amazon may seem like a good idea, but as I mentioned, um, in the past, it was something that people were very questionable of and very critical of. Spending a ton of money on logistics infrastructure and going up against big names who had more time to mature in the space was in fact a risky bet. In the short term, losses continued to mount and increase, and the proof just seemed to be in the numbers that this was not a good idea. Since Amazon has been expanding its delivery services into ocean freights, semi-trucks, and drones, and really the only reason that the company was able to turn a profit was because of its cloud infrastructure arm. AWS or Amazon Web Services. So you really have to put yourself in the place of shareholders and imagine how they felt at the time. The sentiment for the most part probably was that it just isn't working. Fast forward to today, putting all this money into logistics infrastructures has turned into a competitive advantage for Amazon. Amazon went from being dependent on these third party companies to delivering 22% of all packages in 2021. As a benchmark, FedEx had 19% market share and UPS had 24% market share. Now they're on track to become the world's largest logistics company. Customers are choosing Amazon because of convenience. Creating a moat through infrastructure has clearly been proven effective in the e-commerce industry. Is Neo trying to do the same thing in electric vehicles? CEO and Chairman William Lee believes that building out the infrastructure is something that's going to be critical and crucial to Neo's success in the future. To quote him, he views it as planting trees now to enjoy the shade later. I wonder if he took a page out of Amazon's book, but in my opinion, he definitely took a page out of Tesla's book. Tesla has the most mature charging network built out in the US. Unlike many other competitors, they're not relying on third party. They're putting as much focus on electric vehicles as they are on the infrastructure that's powering those vehicles. Infrastructure is costly. You should have gotten that from this video already. That's certainly probably part of the reason that it took Tesla 16 years to become profitable. But in the words of William Lee, they planted the trees first, 
now they get to enjoy the shade. In February, the White House announced that Tesla, with the support of $7.5 billion in government subsidies, will open a portion of its US supercharger and destination charger network to non-Tesla EVs. This is huge as it will provide another source of revenue to the company without having to deliver more cars. The charging business is lucrative, but that's another video. I don't want to deviate too much from this one. Now, NEO has received many subsidies from the Chinese government to build charging infrastructure as well, battery swapping stations, fast charging, etc. Tesla and NEO are being chosen because of their technology. They have the best and most mature technology, but not only that, they already have proven product that's out on the streets. They have infrastructure stood up already and it's working, but not only working, but working well. Getting ahead in the field of electric vehicles involves so much more than just selling cars. I believe that NEO needs to get as much infrastructure on the ground as quickly as they possibly can. And I also believe that they're making the same bet that a tech giant like Amazon has made in the past. Not to mention that China has already chosen battery swapping as a preferred method of refueling and they're looking to standardize it in the future. NEO at some point may be asked to standardize their battery swapping technology. And like we're seeing Tesla, who's more mature in the space right now, um, Battery swapping can certainly become a form of revenue for the company without them having to deliver more cars. Put it simple, Neo's the best at battery swapping in the world. Their ultra fast charging piles are already open to most EV brands as well. To top it off, a lot of R&D spend is going into charging technologies. And trust me, it's a lot, it's in the billion. If it works out the way that things did with Amazon and soon to be Tesla, I think that history will repeat itself to Neo's avail.